Ah, forget about celebrity gossip. I want to talk about penny stocks. I'm John Czar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the last day of May. It is the 31st Wednesday. I'm going to say that again. Wednesday. Anything coming to mind? <laughs> no. Doggone it. You're supposed to remember that I got a live streaming event every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Normally, it's me and Lily Starr. This week, she's not feeling good. Looks like she has the flu. Please get better soon, Lily. But we do have strong backup coming in. Taylorish, aka Taylor, she's going to be doing the charting for me. We go online for about an hour live talking to our viewers about tickers, about stocks they're interested in. Maybe it's stocks you've been doing research on or it's stocks you're holding. Whatever the case, tell us. We'll go in, look at some figures, some facts, some charts, and we'll give you our opinion, whatever that's worth to you. That's 4 o'clock every Thursday Eastern Standard Time. Now, yeah, I've got a passion about penny stocks. I like to share what I find with you. And I'm always looking for stocks that have potential to make money. And the way I decide that is by looking at the charts. I don't know what company I'm looking at. I'm just looking at charts from a scan. And I'm looking for a setup for a breakout or a lot of volume coming in. Then I go looking at the news and the filings. And it doesn't just have to be out today any time recently, maybe even a month back, talking about something that's going to happen in the future. You never know where those catalysts are going to lie. But when you see the chart setting up, it doesn't take much catalyst to get it moving. And I got three stocks today that all have hot charts and reasons to move. First one we're going to take a look at is QGSI, Quant Gate Systems Inc. This has been real quiet. She's had two news presses come out this year, but they're the only ones in the last eight months. But they're big. They're talking about a change of direction for the company. They're getting into AI. And they haven't had anything new for a while, I think over a month. And look, she finished the day at seven and a half cents with 55% gains on the OTC, <laughs> right? She doesn't have any direct catalyst and she's getting a lot of attention. So we got to pay attention to this. She is on the middle tier of the OTC. This is the better tier because they got to audit their financials. You're getting a CPA to do accounting. So we're getting actual factual numbers we can use for fundamentals. You don't get that with the pinks. You get disclosures. These are just numbers the management tosses at us. So being on the QB is much better. Makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. They've also got that verified profile and transfer agent. Yeehaw! This is more verified information. So between the numbers and all of this, they are looking solid. So what is QGSI all about? Well, they've changed directions and it's just easier to jump into those two new news presses that came out this year. This is the first one. It came out February 1st. QuantGate announces new strategic direction into investment management sector with proprietary AI technology. The company, an artificial intelligence machine learning software as a service based fintech solutions provider, is pleased to announce the company is pursuing a new strategic direction into the investment management sector. The company's technology aims to help investment managers make better informed decisions, identify new opportunities, and increase their potential for return on investments to provide investors with the insights they need to succeed in financial markets. <laughs> what we're talking about here, for lack of a better word, is an AI program that's going to help the brokers make more money. It's going to help them to trade. And they'll be able to use these to pass down insights to us normal traders. May even give us subscriptions to it that we got to pay for. And that doesn't sound real exciting, does it? All right, let me improve on this idea. Let's jump on over to that other news press. This came out April 12th. The company and Sterling Trading Tech announced strategic partnership. This collaboration aims to market the advanced QuantGate Opportunity Watchlist, a powerful tool designed to revolutionize the trading experience for you and me. QuantGate Systems is a trailblazing fintech firm that specializes in the in developing state-of-the-art trading signal solutions by harnessing the power of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and advanced analytics, 
QuantGate provides its users with user-friendly tools and real-time market insights, enhancing the trader's ability to make well-informed decisions. And it's easier than you think. They tell us down here that this collaboration with Sterling Trading Tech is a significant milestone, showcasing our commitment to delivering cutting edge solutions to traders on their platform of choice. Here I was thinking I was surely gonna have to move off of TD Ameritrade over to their trading platform to be able to use this AI tool. Nope, it comes to us. It's some sort of add-on, some sort of clip-on. The last thing I wanna share with you here is your competition. With over 100 clients, including leading brokers, clearing firms, prop groups, all in over 20 countries. Look, my point, everybody's gonna start using AI. We're gonna have to incorporate it. If you think you're smarter than AI, you're not, believe me, nobody is. And AI is gonna be the only thing to be able to compete with AI. This is gonna be a whole new world. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Wow, look at that increase. We've got over 10 times the increase in volume, a thousand percent, going from 91,000 shares under the radar to just under a million. Share structure for QGSI, not looking up the floats. We're just gonna play with the numbers we get here. Outstanding share count, we can normally trust this one, 284 million. Now they tell us the unrestricted shares is 32 million, which are the shares on the market, which is what the float is. So I would presume that the float would be about 32 million. Well, if I look at the unrestricted shares here, 252 from 284, just subtract it, we're left with about 32 million. So I'm willing to believe that is our float, roughly about 32 million, which isn't bad out of 284 million outstanding. Looking at Quant's financials, all right, they just started making money last year. May is the end of their fiscal year. At the end of May 2022, they had just a little over a quarter million dollars. Don't forget, we got three zeros we have to put behind any of the numbers on these charts. Looking at it quarterly, where'd the money go? She's on time with her filing. She's got her one in here for 2023. She made $46,000, but uh, it doesn't look very strong here right now. So the news that just came out, this change of direction, hopefully it's all about changing their revenues. Looking at those disclosures. Ooh, we got nothing here since 2016. So we don't have to worry about that. And as I said, their financials are caught up. And I've already showed you most of the news. But there is one other news press I do want to share with you. It's a little old. This came out July of last year, but I think it's pretty relevant. QuantGate CEO acquires 90 million shares at 20 cents per share from the founders. Do the math, that's $14 million worth of the company stock he bought. But more importantly, I went and looked at the charts. On the day he bought this and that period, it was at 8 cents and he paid 20 cents a share for it. And right now we're basically back at eight cents. So if that means anything at all. Now let's go take a look at that chart because that's really what caught my attention. We're gonna take a look at QGSI on Thinkorswim. This is the free trading platform you get just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. So QuantGate, six month, four hour view. When she was above all of her SMAs back here in October, she hit a high just under 11 cents. And then at the end of March, when she was under all of her SMAs, she hit a low of 0.011, just a smidge over a penny. Then at the beginning of May, she took off at roughly two cents up to seven cents, over a 300% run right there. She came back down, hit that 50, firm and secure, landing on it, re-landing on it, and then she just jumped. Look at here, you see our 50-day SMA crossing that 200-day SMA? That's a golden cross. It's one of the most powerful signs on the charts, arguably. <laughs> but we got a nice 100% plus run today. She ran here from under three and a half cents to over seven and a half cents. And she has kept most of that. She is up there at 0.074. Volume has started coming back in quickly and our oscillators are all pushing to the moon. Every single one of them is going up. You can't lose if your oscillators are pushing up. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. An ideal chart, 
Low bubble in this corner of a penny and a half. High bubble in this corner at the very end of the day of seven and a half cents. So that gives you 500% run right there in those last 20 days. She bounced off of that 200. She did come through her 50, but she respected that 200 and then just shot right through that 50 again. So if she comes down, you may want to remember she doesn't really expect Not a bad looking chart. This is QGSI. We're doing our charting on Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform you get just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. So looking at Quantgate, that is a six month, four hour view. Our high bubble back here in October when she was above all of her SMAs was just under 11 cents. And then at the end of March, she was under all of her SMAs, just a hair over a penny at 0.011. At the beginning of May, she got a bit spunky here, jumping from about two cents up to a little over seven cents. So you got over 300% run there. She did come down, hit hard and firm on that 50, and then she bounced off just as our 50-day SMA is crossing the 200. That is a golden cross. That is one of the most powerful signs on the charts, arguably. <laughs> she had a nice run today. She ran from uh, under three and a half cents to about seven and a half cents over a hundred percent gains and she kept it she is up there right now volume has started coming in very strong not a lot of it but it's pushing hard speaking of pushing hard all of our oscillators are pushing to the moon they're all looking great looking at our 20-day one-hour view Oh, that's a beautiful chart because you got your low bubble in this corner and your high bubble in that corner going from a penny and a half to seven and a half cents over that 20 day period, that's a 500% gain. She did rise up. She did not pay any mind to the 50 day. She gave all creed to the 200 day, came through the 50 without showing it any attention whatsoever, no love, she took off again. So if she comes back down, don't expect her to bounce off of the 50. She'll probably go right through the 50 like she did these two times and come back down to the 200. Our oscillators, they're great. All of them are pushing up, and we are now in the overbought on our RSI. Now, I'm curious to see if she had a pullback on that high bubble. Let's come on down to that five minutes. Not yet. Wow, look at that run. That is so gorgeous. Three and a half to seven and a half cents. Whoa, and it just stuck up there. Just nailed to the ceiling. Matter of fact, I want to see if she pulled back. No. She did not. She pulled back before she hit her high, and then she hit that high, and she has stopped right there. Now, I want to go back to that five minute just to get a feel for what's happening here. Oscillator. This is leveled off, but then everything is kind of leveled off, right? Um, ooh, we had a crossover back here on our MACD. She is underneath right now, and she has been coming down towards the signal line. Our RSI is pushing up. However, our strongest SMA on the board, the 50, is pushing up right now. Now, she wasn't paying attention to the 50 on the one hour. She might, considering it's the strongest SMA on the five minute chart. What I would anticipate, best case scenario, she is gonna stay up here until this 50 day SMA comes up and taps her in the butt and then she'll start to go again. That's my feeling, but you gotta keep your eye on it. QGSI, change of direction. She's already done it on the chart. Now we just gotta get those revenues coming in. I like her. Do you? Now, if you've got a really good memory, you might recall we covered DHC back in February. We caught it just as she was getting ready to break out over that 200. She was at 86 cents. Over the next 10 to 14 days, she hit a high of $1.99. So we had well over 100% run on that one. Well, she's doing it again. She came back down underneath the 200, is curved around and looking ripe. So DHC, she finished the day at $1.36 with almost 8% gains. Now you'll notice over here, this is called a fund. Sometimes you see stock, sometimes you see warrant. You can still trade it as a stock. But the reason they call it a fund is because it's more like a right. This is a property investment company. DHC is a real estate investment trust focused on owning high quality healthcare properties located throughout the United States. DHC seeks diversification across the health services spectrum by care delivery and practice type. 
by scientific research disciplines and by property type and location. As of March 31st, 2023, DHC's approximate $7.1 billion portfolio included 376 properties in 36 states and Washington, D.C., occupied by approximately 500 tenants and totaling approximately 9 million square feet of life science and medical office properties and more than 27,000 senior living units. DHC is managed by RMR Group, they are also on the NASDAQ, a leading U.S. alternative assets management company with over $37 billion in their asset portfolio. So that's what the company does. They are doing a lot. They're working with the elderly. They're working with properties. And they are making a lot of money doing this. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Nice increase. Got over 100% on this as well. Going from 2.7 to 5.7 million. Share structure for DHC. Didn't do any more work on this than what you see. Outstanding share count. 237 million. No clue what the float is. We just know it's under 237 million. Looking at our financials. The company is making money. Property always does. As you can see, they're into the billions. Don't forget those three zeros here. Now you know why they yank them off. When these numbers start getting big, they just don't fit on the screen. So at the end of 2022, they had dropped just a little bit to 1.2 million, losing about $100 million from year to year. Looking at the quarterly, well, they've been doing 313, 322, 330. Actually, they're growing here, aren't they? Every single quarter is getting bigger. And this is their first quarter for 2023, exceeding all of the previous quarters for the year before. So as I said, financially, they are looking good. Disclosures for the company. All right, we've got a 425 here. What is a 425? I thought this is for shares. Let me see. With a closing commences implication of financing strategy murder. Oh, this is about a deal they made. Right. That is part of the news I want to share with you. Anything else we got here? Yes. This SC13D is a form that is filed when a new partner is brought on board. That is to say, when somebody buys enough shares that they qualify to own a percentage of the company. Well, we got a new one here. Flat-footed LLC. They bought themselves 7.5%, and then the person that owns that company, Mark Anderson, under their own name, bought about 7.5%. So, they've got about 15% of the company. Now, what's interesting here, let me find that news right here. What's interesting is they just got into the company, right? They just bought in. Flat-footed sends letter to Diversified Healthcare Trust Board regarding its opposition to the merger with Office Properties Income Trust. And that's the big news. That's our catalyst. That They were talking about it back here. It was under discussion, but they had news come out about five days ago. Office Properties Income Trust commences the implementation of its financing strategy for its merger with Diversified Healthcare Trust with a closing of $30.7 million mortgage loan. So the deal looks like it's going through and I don't know all the details. We're just looking for a catalyst to get the chart running. And this is hot, folks. Now, I don't know why this guy is against it. Maybe some due diligence is required. He may have a point we're not aware of. But in either case, the chart is hot and the news is big and they've got big numbers being thrown around here. And it seems to be a right, a cheap priced right. Rights normally aren't this cheap, so I'm a little impressed by that just in itself. Let's go take a look at that chart. I hope we do as well with the chart this time as we did last time. This is ticker DHC, six-month, four-hour view. That blue line tells me we were here February 17th when it was 86 cents. Over the next three weeks, there was a lot of rips and jumps, many opportunities to take gains. She hit her high here May 8th of $1.99. 
Now, I threw a Fibonacci up here, Fibonacci up here, from the bottom of this surge to the top of the surge, and I was looking for the center right here. When she started falling, I wanted to see if she would hang on to at least half of what she threw on the table. She struggled with it here, but then she lost it. I expected her to bounce off the 200. She didn't do that either. She fell way down here, but she has curved around. Here come the SMAs and look where she settled. She is up over top of that 50% mark now. She's in the strong zone. So she has not only crossed the 200, but she has gotten over top of the 50% on that Fibonacci. Volume is strong, not exceedingly strong, but it's consistent and it's there. Our oscillators are looking great. Every single one of them is pushing to the moon and our RSI is on fire. Can't ask for any more than that. 20 day, one hour view. Well, you could ask for a low bubble in this corner and a high bubble in that corner. 80 cents to $1.42. She was just wiggling across this 50 day SMA, but once she got to that 200, boy, she pounced like a cat on a hot stove up on top of that nine day SMA. She did bounce off the 50 a couple times here, but for the last two days, it's been nothing but nine. She has been floating on that. And she's had a little bit of pullback up here after market hours. Oscillators, they're still hot, but they do show that flux right here, those little red bars. Looking at that five day, five minute. Low bubble back here, dollar three, dollar 42 over here. She has been hanging around the 200. She doesn't want to fall. She's looking for a reason to climb. And right now she is fully respecting that 50 day SMA. She hangs on to the nine and the 20, but when she falls, she falls to the 50. Except right there at the end of the day, she did break the 50 coming down to one of those Fibonacci support resistance lines and then bouncing back up and getting back on the 50 back to business. And you can see exactly that. She did have a come down and she's bouncing back right now. I think DHC's got something to give. I think the charts are hot. I think they're going to be making some good money. I like the news. Do some more DD, DHC. She's looking good to me. Last stock we're taking a look at comes off the major exchange, the NASDAQ to be specific. This is CBAT Energy Technology, ticker CBAT, CBAT. Her chart is the kind we're always looking for, easy to identify, the atypical breakout chart, which is what I like to call it. You know the one I'm talking about. You've got the 200-day SMA coming down like a ski slope, and then it starts to level off, and right up underneath it, you got the price sneaking on it, getting ready to slice through it and run. That's what we got going here. And she does have Catalyst. She just came out with recent news about an innovation on their products. And about a month ago, they made a big deal. So yeah, this is a good time to consider CBAT. CBAT finished the day at 92 cents and just under 5% gains. So what does this company do? We're going directly to one of their news presses. They tell us that the company is a leading high-tech enterprise in China, engaged in the development, manufacturing, and sales of new energy, high-power lithium batteries. The applications of the company's products include electric vehicles, light electric vehicles, electric tools, energy storage, uninterruptible power supply, and other power applications. And for your information, CBAC Energy was the first lithium battery manufacturer in China ever listed on the NASDAQ. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, without any news or filings today, we did have more interest. She jumped from just under 100,000 to just under 175,000 shares. Share structure for the company, not a lot of information here. Outstanding share count isn't too bad. We're at 89 million. Our float's going to be less than that. Financials for CBAT. Looking really good. Every single year they've been increasing. 22, 37, 52 million, and then a huge jump, 500% to 248 million. That is a giant jump, folks. Quarterly, well, we do have their most recent financial that just came out. It did dip a little bit, but not as much as you would think, considering how far they've come. They dropped $10 million, but they're still making a lot more money than they were making before. Disclosures for the company. Just had their most recent financial come out two weeks ago, their 10Q, which is their quarterly report. They were going to be late on it, but they got it out in time. If you want information about the company, 
forget about Google. There's no reason to go to 100, 1,000 sites to get all the information you can get in one filing. Use your search bar. You'll be able to find whatever it is you're looking for, except maybe the float. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at that news. So there's two pieces of news over here I want to share with you. I told you they had made an innovation on some of their products. Well, they are working on this state-of-the-art sodium ion battery that they are just now getting ready to launch. That is a big deal just in itself. And then back here on the 18th of April, the company announces battery orders from Power Oak, parent company of top-rated portable power brand Blue TTI. And that's the one I actually want to share with you. This came out April 18th. Seaback Energy Technology, a leading lithium ion battery manufacturer and electric energy solution provider in China, today announced its wholly owned subsidiary, Nanjing Seaback New Energy Technology, has recently secured substantial orders worth approximately 2.7 million from Shezhuan Power Oak Technology. Nanjing Seaback has received orders totaling approximately 5.3 million from Power Oak as of April 18th, 2023. Power Oak and Blue TTI are among the top three players in the global portable power station market. Power Oak's products have gained popularity not only in China, but also in over 70 countries and regions around the world, including Europe, Japan, Korea, and America. When you've got a company that big selling your products, you're going to start making more money. And I think that's enough to get this chart moving. Let's go take a look at it. Let's see what we can see about CBAC. This is CBAC Energy, six month, four hour view. We got a high bubble six months ago of $1.44 and she has been falling since then. She hit a low of 74 cents at the beginning of May, and off of that low bubble, she is changing her trend. Slowly, she worked her way towards that 50. Once she got on top of that 50, you see how big the bars got? Intention. She got excited. She started pushing towards that 200 at her first breakout three days ago, came back down to the 9, floating on the 9, not losing any strength, came back up to that 200, cracked it cracked it and she is now on top of it volume is growing as she's climbing oscillators are all pushing up all of them look great rsi right now is at 68 20 day one hour view low here is 74 cents just hanging on to that 50 until that 200 got close you see it over and over again and then boom once it was close enough she jumped jumped very fast and now she isn't even paying mind to the 200 she is bouncing off of the 50 and here we go floating on the nine for three days floating on the nine now she did go sideways a lot today and she even had a wee bit of pullback at the end of the day but she is still on top of the nine Oscillators on our one hour chart, everything shows just a little bit of pullback just because of that, but everything has been pushing up very strong. RSI is now down at 59. Take a look at our five day, five minute. Well, the 200 is strong. Going from the bottom corner here, cutting up, we see she has been bouncing off of that 200 a few times. She has now gotten up to the 50 perfect example here right she got too far away from the 200 that's what she's been respecting then she got clear up here too far away chances are she could have easily come all the way back down to here which nobody wants to see so what she did was just hang around she just stuck it out up here waiting for the 50 day which was her second cousin she paid a lot of attention to it too so rather than come all the way down it just waited until the 50 day came along and now she's sitting on that now seems to me she's been sitting on it too long i would have thought she'd have gotten a push by now but this is what we were waiting for looks like that's what she was waiting for so i'd be looking for a bounce right now not to mention this new contract they just got that's going to bring in a lot of money that is a huge deal and the new battery this sodium ion battery that could be huge as well so cbat definitely belongs on your watch list watch for the volume it'll be the telltale sign there you go folks three more hot stocks charts looking good we got catalysts and you know the sad thing is there's lots of hot charts out there 
I can only bring you three a day, maybe four, but there's a lot more than that. So don't cheat yourself, folks. Just don't count on my due diligence. Do your own. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.